Hey there YouTube, my name is Flight Sim Guy, and today I'm going to spend some time in Europe's number one air superiority combat fighter jet, the Eurofighter, otherwise known as the Typhoon. This add-on is produced by Just Flight and is available for all flavors of FSX. Today I'm going to spend some time on the basics of this add-on, some background of the Eurofighter and tell you what I like, what I don't like and my experiences with this add-on aircraft. Today I'm flying from San Francisco International to LAX. I have no flight plan, I'm doing this VFR and using the built-in GPS and my compass. I have active sky next loaded and lots of AI traffic for atmosphere. So let's get to it. First, let's get with the basics. This add-on costs about 26 euros, that's about 30 bucks US. And the product installed and loaded with no problems. There are many liveries representing the many national air forces that use the Typhoon as the background for their national air defense and mainline strike fighter. The first thing you'll notice about this add-on is how gorgeous and beautiful it is both on the outside and in the virtual cockpit. Many of the switches and buttons are animated and some are modeled. You're going to be amazed at how uncluttered and organized this cockpit is. Once you're inside, you will not be overwhelmed by buttons and switches everywhere. That's a refreshing break. All the buttons for lights, fuel pumps, engine start, etc. are clearly represented and modeled. I took a moment to look at real Typhoon cockpits and guess what, they look pretty much the same here. Now I'm pretty sure the MFDs aren't representative of the real thing, but that's okay. The one function I like is the ability to select your stores, you know, weapons, payload, external tanks. From that screen you can select stores based on your mission type, such as air to air, air to ground, reconnaissance, interdiction, interception, etc. The plane's weight and flight performance will vary based on the stores selected. Starting this bird is very easy. All you have to do is turn on the master power, turn on the fuel boost pumps, turn on the master avionics, then hit the engine start. And that's it. All the keys related to nav, comm, and autopilot, they're all there. You may need to take a moment to learn the cockpit, or if you're going to be a prude about it, look it up in the documentation. There is a 45 page manual that comes with this add-on. And I regret to say that unlike the real air and Lionheart manuals, the font here forced me to break up my bifocals. Only about 50% of each page is used for the content. Tons of blank space on all the pages. Come on guys, you wasted plenty of real estate here. If you made everything bigger, you'd still be within 45 pages, but everything would be a lot easier to read. The manual, as it turns out, was indicative of other things to come regarding this add-on. Taxing was uneventful, but once I hit my takeoff roll, reality set in. Remember what I said about the Typhoon being beautiful? Well, in this case, beauty is only skin deep. Don't get me wrong, I'm not a combat pilot, or a military pilot, or any sort of pilot to speak of. I've flown real planes before, and I'm not sure if that gives me any credibility here. That said, when I hit my takeoff roll, I was at full military power, no afterburners, and I did my rotate at about 150 knots. Before I had a chance to raise my gear on my flaps, I noticed my airspeed tearing through 275 to 300 knots. I know this plane has two engines, but damn, what the hell, man? Anyway, let's talk about the production tank for a bit. It's developed and built by a consortium of plane makers from France, Spain, 
Italy, Germany, and Britain. Now, given these guys' history, I'm surprised they were able to work together to produce such a fine aircraft. Anyway, here are some of the technical details. Crew, one, operational aircraft, or two, training aircraft. Length, 52 feet. Wingspan, 36 feet. Empty weight, 24,000 pounds. Loaded weight, 35,000 pounds. Maximum takeoff weight, 52,000 pounds. Power plant is provided by two Eurojet EJ200 afterburning turbofans. Fuel capacity, 11,000 pounds internal. Now, regarding performance, we have a maximum speed off at altitude, Mach 2. At sea level, Mach 1.25. Supercruise, that is attaining uh, max speed without using afterburners, that's at Mach 1.5. It has a range of 1,800 miles. Service ceiling off, 65,000 feet. Rate of climb, 62,000 feet per minute. Maximum G load, plus 9, minus 3 Gs. Brakes off to takeoff acceleration less than 8 seconds. Brakes off to supersonic acceleration less than 30 seconds. Brakes off to Mach 1.6 at 36,000 feet is less than 150 seconds. The Typhoon can carry a wide array of air-to-air -air and air-to-ground weapons. It can reach Mach 1 without afterburners, that's also known as supercruise, and carries the most advanced fire control radar that would make America's best frontline fighters think twice about picking on this bad boy. The best way to describe the Typhoon is to think of it as a combination of the F-16 Falcon and the F-15 Eagle. It has a fly-by-wire flight control system, bubble canopy for great all-around visibility, and like the F-16, it is de deliberately aerodynamically unstable, but with the fly-by-wire flight control computer, it's a dream to fly and is crazy maneuverable. Let me tell you, you do not want to get into a knife fight with this plane. She will fucking cut you. It can pull 9 G's on you in a heartbeat. Combine that with two Eurojet EJ200 afterburning turbofans spitting 14,000 pounds each, and you're messing with some serious muscle. A few years ago at the annual Air Force Red Flag competition at Nellis Air Force Base in Nevada, a German squadron of Eurofighter Typhoons got to go one-on-one -on -one with America's top-line fighter jet, the F-22. The results? Well, it was not what our commanders were expecting. In a dogfight, the Eurofighter was more than a match for the F-22. Sure, the F-22 can see and kill its opponents at greater range, but in a night fight, the Typhoon held its own and served our pilots roasted crow with a side of humble pie. The Eurofighter is flown by air forces all over the world. Development started back in the mid-80s, and by the late 90s, Eurofighters were being delivered to countries such as England, Germany, Austria, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Spain, Italy, and Oman. At over 100 million per copy, it's not cheap. It's a fourth generation fighter that competes directly with Boeing's F-18, the Dassault, Rafael, and Mirage fighters, and to a lesser extent, Saab's Gripen fighter. While it's not a stealthy aircraft, the designers were careful to make sure the Typhoon had the smallest radar cross-section possible. Also, it's interesting to note that the Typhoon is one of the many fourth generation fighters to employ an innovation of aviation that we've had from the days of the Wright brothers. What I'm talking about are canards. These are the tiny wings employed just aft or in front of the pilot's cockpit. It allows for additional lift at slower speeds, thereby reducing the risks of stalls and allows for a steeper angle of attack. Since the Typhoon's flight system is computerized, 
any instability in flight caused by canards can be mitigated. All the fighters, which include canards, are the Saab uh, Vegan, the Saab Gripen, and various Russian Su model fighter jets. This makes you wonder: what do they know that Americans don't? Right? The United States bet the farm on stealth technology, and I think that was a big, big, big mistake. Pentagon war planners, they really screwed the pooch regarding American strategic air power. Our best fighter, the F-22, was cut at only 187 copies. And for a while there, the F-22 was choking its pilots from a defect in the pilot's oxygen system. The F-22's assembly line, that's long been boxed up and put into storage. The complementary fighter, the F-35, that plane is an abomination. It's overpriced, late, and it can't get the job done. In a dogfight, that Typhoon would eat the F-35 for lunch. We should have left stealth technology to tactical and strategic bombers. For fighters, America should have stayed the course. Upgrade and improve the F-15, the F-16, and the F-18. And by the way, the F-14, that was the best fighter we ever had. Remind me why we retired that again? Anyway, let's get back to Just Flight's Your Fighter Typhoon. Once you've gotten your takeoff speed on the control, you'll find that this is a fun aircraft to fly. It incorporates a stock GPS, so navigation is a breeze. The HUD is helpful, and you have many options to play with on the MFD. I find the flight model to be somewhat, shall I say, unrealistic. I hate to say this because I have nothing to baseline it against, but it just doesn't feel like what a real fighter jet is supposed to feel like. I wish I could say the same thing for Dino Catania's add-on. His plane seems more realistic and they're free. Just Flight's Typhoon feels not unlike the stock F-18 that comes with the FSX acceleration. They both reach 0.5 Mach within a few seconds after taking off and with regards to that it feels a bit cartoonish to fly. Unlike the F-16, landing the Eurofighter Typhoon is a breeze. However, you will need to use the air brake. It is your friend and you will need it when you land. You don't need to fly a high angle of attack like the F-16. The canards will help you make a nice soft and smooth landing. Also, I forgot to show you, but this add-on also has an arrestor hook, so you can use it to do carrier landings, but I haven't tried that though.
Now, I gotta tell you, landing is one thing. Stopping, well, that's an entirely different story. The air brake and the wheel brakes are not enough to help you slow down to a speed where it's safe to taxi. But don't worry though, the good news is Just Flight's Typhoon comes with a parachute. The bad news is the parachute doesn't behave like a parachute. For some stupid reason, for this add on, the parachute behaves exactly like thrust reversers, which can get a bit awkward like you see here. Anyway, in conclusion, for 26 euros I would have expected a little bit more from Just Flight. That said, it's probably the best Eurofighter on the market right now. So if you must, go ahead and get it. But if you're a stickler for believable flight dynamics, you might be a little bit disappointed. If I knew then what I know now, I would have held off and waited for Dino Catenio's version of the Eurofighter Typhoon. He recently published pics of the external textures. Beta is still a few months away, but compared to what's out there right now, including this add-on, I think it will be worth the wait. I am Flight Sim Guy. Thanks for taking the time to stop by and I will see you next time.